Hey guys, it's going bottom here. Uh, and today I wanted to do a different kind of video. Uh, I wanted to do kind of like a resource and uh, kind of just help some people out. Um, so like one of the things that I get a lot of sometimes in DMs, sometimes comments is like, how do I find my references? And uh, when you're, and I've definitely been there before, uh, especially when you're new um, and you don't really know all the specific terms for ships or planes or whatever, it can be difficult to look certain things up. Um, so I'm going to do a series of videos and I've, they're going to mostly focus along the lines of what I'm building, uh, just in case you're building too, and you want to build along. Um, and yeah. And so the, and I want these to be reference videos where you can kind of take screenshots of certain things. Um, like for this one specifically, when we're talking about measures, uh, screenshot them. So, and, and know you have a place to go back to hear kind of like the backstory through it all if that makes any sense to you. Um, so yeah, tell me what you think of these types of videos. Um, but yeah, without further delay, uh, I'll get right into it. At the end of World War One, the US Navy saw no reason to continue with the dazzle patterns and reverted back to the light gray. Of... However, the topic of ship concealment was always on the back burner of many people's minds in the US Navy. So they decided to run a few experiments it was suggested that two destroyers for the experiments from Destroyer Squadron 5 and 18 were to be used, and were to be viewed by aircraft, with one having a standard light gray hull and the other in dark gray decks, and the other having dark gray decks with medium blue-gray vertical surfaces. The flights were conducted from the surface and from the air during day and nighttime hours. Various schemes were tried, including solid tones, graded patterns, and breaking up features with contrasting patterns. There were no different definite conclusions reached, but the report recommended further experiments. Interest in the camouflage was sustained by a series of two experiments leading to the painting of dazzle, dazzle designs from April to July of 1936. The results showed that some designs achieved disruption and promoted false headings while others did not. The original belief in the Navy was that a very dark blue tint was best for concealment. However, the findings and conclusions were false. They had been testing this tint off the coast of California as well as in Hawaii. However, at the time, the Pacific Fleet operated in the western and southern Pacific, leading to the tint being less than ideal for the area of operation. The first measures the Navy used was varied in color, but not really in pattern. The measure one was an overall dark gray with the superstructures and the smokestacks, masked as well, being in a light gray where the deck was left bare with the exception of the aircraft carriers, which used a mahogany stain. Measure 2 was two different bands of gray along the hull, going horizontally. With the U.S. Navy looking for camo to be used in night operations, they did the obvious thing and painted some of their destroyers, along with the USS Ranger and Wasp, all black. However, in their testing at night, they found that the ship stood out way too much in more than just a dark gray one, even at very dark conditions. The U.S. also experimented with disguising cruisers to look like other ships. In the case of Metaship 6, they painted Brooklyn-class cruisers to look like a New Orleans-class cruiser by painting the silhouette of the New Orleans-class cruiser dark and the rest of the ship on the Brooklyn-class a light gray. In Measure 8, they painted the St. Louis-class carrier a cra class cruiser to resemble a two-funnel destroyer. However, this caused confusion amongst its friendly ships and when trying to get into formation. One other notable thing the Navy tried was to paint a fake bow wake on the ships to give the illusion of a constant movement. By 1941, the Navy found that none of these camos were effective. They found they had a lot of paint issues, especially the dark gray being too visible in any condition, as well as durability issues, and measures 1 through 8 were canned. In 1941, the Atlantic fleet were ordered to be painted in measure 12, and the Pacific were to be painted in measure 11. In the early Navy battles of the Pacific, the Navy found the ships painted in Measure 11, which was an all-Navy scheme, were under attack less than the ones painted in Measure 12. Measure 12 was originally another two-tone gray scheme, but at some point, the Navy decided to modify it, and instead of horizontal lines, they would go with gray splotches along the hull and superstructure. However, the Navy found that at distance, these darker gray splotches would morph together into one solid color of gray. By mid-1942, with some more experience under the belt, the Navy rolled out improved paints for Measure 12 and 11. As the sun and the salt water beat down on these ships, the once effective Measure 11 would fade badly and become too bright. And so the Navy issued a new batch of paint called Navy 
5N, replacing Navy 5S. It was darker, and not only that, it faded a lot better. They also found it did well in night ops, especially under enemy illumination. Measure 22 was issued to replace Measure 12. It would replace the issues that were caught in the earlier Measure 12. From the deck and lower, it would be painted navy blue instead of the gray, and everything up would be painted light, light gray. This was in ordered on all ships that were not under direct threat, but were under threat from coastal batteries. It was originally put on ships in the Atlantic Theater. However, after the Marianas Turkey shoot in 1944, the U.S. Navy was comfortable putting it on ships in the Pacific as the threat of the Japanese aerial attacks dwindled and were not the same threat as they were in the earlier years. Measures 31 and 33 with the dazzle patterns of the U.S. Navy. The whole point of the dazzle pattern is to protect yourself from enemy subs. The principle behind it is by breaking up your ship with counter shading and geometric shapes and colors, you can trick the human eye and the enemy sub into hopefully not gauging your distance, speed, or heading by picking out one spot on your ship and using it for reference. I could not find any of the stats the U.S. Navy had on the dazzle pattern effectiveness, but the British in World War I found that while there was a slight increase of the ships painted in the dazzle pattern being attacked compared to their all-great contemporaries, the ships painted in the dazzle pattern scheme when struck by torpedoes only sunk 43% of the time compared to 52 And to go with that, 41% of the dazzle ships were struck midship compared to the 52 of the uncamouflaged. However, the dazzle pattern makes you more visible to enemy surface ships and aircraft. By 1944, most of the surface ships were painted in the dazzle pattern. But by 1945, the war had shifted and the threat was no longer submarines, it was the kamikaze. And all ships were ordered to be repainted back into Measure 21 and 22. But anyway, guys, hopefully you liked that video. Um, I know it wasn't super in-depth or anything. I tried to keep it semi-brief, honestly, just because it was... I don't know. It, it, this is the first time doing it for me. So I am definitely going to learn from here. Um, hopefully you learned something. I thought this was a super interesting topic. I knew it's super kind of nerdy and niche. But hopefully if you guys like ships, you like this one. Um, I didn't go over every single pattern out there because there isn't a lot to say about um, basically of 15 through uh, past 12 and in between 12 and 30 uh, 31 really um because a lot of them were for like pt boats and landing craft uh and subs obviously and this was more focused on surface ships actually entirely on surface ships um so yeah hopefully you guys liked it uh let me know what you guys think i'm gonna probably i'm going to continue the series um the next two ones i plan on doing is a history of saratoga and uh enterprise uh but not the way people normally do it this is going to be more of like a is going over the changes throughout the years on them like what the refits were because i know that information can be kind of hard to find at times uh so yeah guys thanks for watching and peace